Hey everybody, uh, today's video, what I wanted to do is highlight um, a little bit of ICF pool building. And this pool here is a ICF vinyl liner. It is the simplest kind of pool you could ever build. It's the most cost effective pool. We also do really high end mono pours, which are uh, more on par with gunite. But uh, this pool, it's a, it's a rectangle. It's got thermoplastic stairs. It's only six feet deep. So what I'm gonna do today is just kind of show you a lot of upcoming videos including this one i just wanted to show you what everything looks like uh right before we pour uh james and his boys are getting ready to pour a four inch slab it'll have a thickened edge where the walls are going when we do vinyl liners we don't have to do a mono pour we pour it in two parts we pour the floor and then the walls so today they're going to be pouring the walls or the sorry the floor and uh check it out okay so the boys are pouring the monolithic pool floor at the moment with the footings and the floor together and what they're doing is just trying to get it very flat. Um, the finish is not super important on this as the vinyl liner will go over it but look at the uh, fancy pump truck driving by John Martin with roast concrete pumping. Got to give him props for that one. Um, but really the most important part of this pour is that the breaks between the deep end and the slope and the slope and the shallow end are very square with the pool so that the liner fits nice. Um, that's the most important aspect of this. The finish we're going to go for, um, like I said, they're just going to try to get it really flat and then they're going to get it to about a Fresno finish and that's as, uh, you know, that's as smooth as it needs to be. But now that we have the concrete floor poured, today we are going to build the ICF walls, which these are the corner blocks. We've got a lot of straights around here and what we're going to do is just simply lay it out on the floor and start building from the deep end out. And uh, once we get two rows on, we'll stop and we'll square it and level it because they, the way they clip together, it takes two rows before it really has any stability. And uh, we'll build the walls and then uh, put the uh, necessary plumbing through the walls and be ready to pour it in no time. It's like a day long process, it's very fast. So I lost my time lapse of this portion, but me and two guys who had never touched ICF before did this on a Saturday. Actually the homeowner and one of my friends stacked all this ICF in about four hours. My boys came in the following Monday, braced it up, got our inspection, and then uh, you know we poured it in another couple hours. We actually attached the uh, liner track and bullnose coping and poured all the way to the coping in this one shot so effectively it was ready for the liner when we were done. So uh, we've got all the tedious stuff uh, underway before we drop the liner. That's the next step on, a, uh, on an ICF pool. Just to catch you up, the things I didn't videotape, um, we put styrene sheets, which is a, just a cheap plastic sheet over the ICF. It's not a step you have to take. We do it so uh, if we have a nice powerful light in the pool, which we do on this pool, when it's casting the light across the walls at night, if you've got dents and stuff in the ICF, you'll see that. The ICF is very easy on a liner. It doesn't hurt anything, but it just doesn't look as good. So we put this skin that's a little more resistant to being damaged or dented. So we did that yesterday. We got all the water pumped out. Now we've just got to get the surface to dry up a little. The sun just now came out, so I think we're in good shape on that. We're going to lay the liner foam. I'll give you a few other little detail uh, videos on kind of how we get ready for everything. Then we'll drop that liner and start filling it up. So it's an exciting day, kind of get this one wrapped up. So now um, I'm going to show you what we do. This is an Intellibrite 5G. It's not really much different on the outside than your typical like incandescent white lights, but really fancy um, LED light. Got like a 50,000 hour life. But this, this uh, stainless ring here won't fit through the, 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 the trim ring. So what we have to do is actually take it apart now and put just the, uh, the diode and the driver and everything because it's got a wire that's you know sealed, obviously. So it's going to set back in here. We're going to tape it up and then take the rest of the, uh, of the unit and put it up here until the water gets up here far enough that we can tap the liner. So what we got to do is we got to loosen this screw up and then we got to take, mm, gotta start taking this off. My thumbs are strong enough today. Let's see about there. Okay, so now that that's, get that ring off and that ring kind of stays for the moment. Let's see. And take this guy off and now the rest of this can stay in here we're gonna put all of this and I'll do probably a neater job of this after I get the camera turned off but just kind of wind that up you put it back in here like so 
And like I said, right now it's not sealed, so if it were to get in the water, that would be bad. But we will, before, I'm going to take that trim ring, put it right up here, and then I'm going to tape a big X across it right now so it can't fall out. And uh, that, that is ready for the liner. Uh, we've got these here, they come with a rubber gasket, so they're kind of ready for the liner now. Just make sure they're cleaned up. And then uh, I've already taken the seals off the, the thermoplastic stairs, so they are ready. So really after this, I believe the only thing we have left to do is to get the floor foam down, which is tedious and takes a little time. I'm gonna put one more on there just for good measure. And uh, we'll start doing the foam and then drop the liner. So James and his guys are doing the flat work uh, between the house and the pool. And we're just kind of waiting for it to dry up a little bit so we can start sticking the liner foam or the yeah the floor foam down to the uh, concrete and it it performs a couple functions it uh it acts kind of like a carpet pad makes makes it nice and soft on your feet under the liner it also protects the liner from you know abrasions from the concrete uh, you don't have to use it we've done it without in the past but obviously the floor is pretty hard uh, on your feet if you, uh, if you don't have it. So is all we're doing is we're using some 3M adhesive uh, to stick it down to the concrete and taping the seams to keep it uh, aligned to where there's no overlap and there's no gaps. And that's pretty much it. It's a very easy process, just kind of tedious. And uh, once you get this done, you're ready for the liner. Okay guys, so now we have literally everything done. We are ready to put the liner in. Just to kind of show you what you uh, kind of have to expect if you're doing this yourself, is we put a uh, piece of OSB, which is a million dollars right now, but we cap the top of the stairs because the stairs are in the envelope as far as the liner will be here until we get the water up. But when we put the vacuum on it, that has to be sealed up or it won't, it won't pull a vacuum. So we do this and then we just, the liner sits in this track and then when it gets over here, we just tape the crap out of it to seal it up. And then the only other thing we do, other, we got the liner foam, Daryl's down there fixing up. Come down here and I'll uh, show you. So any of the uh, small penetrations like the returns, just have a rubber gasket that's glued on there and we just put a seal on and then that seals up around the liner, we cut it out. But your bigger openings like your skimmers and your mains, they'll come with two kind of a cork or you know some kind of fiber um, gasket and one of them has to be behind the liner and one of them has to be on the outside of the liner. So the one behind the liner, we just put it on here and put two of the screws in, which is behind the liner. Same thing with the mains, you can see we've got them sitting here, we've got two screws holding it. And what I'll do is as soon as the liner's in and it's starting to fill and it's stretching in where it goes, I'll come over and I will find those screws and I'll poke the uh, Phillips head down into them, puncture the liner and pull this screw back through, put the other seal and the, the ring on, screw off all eight screws and then I'm done. So that's actually how we hold them still while we're pulling the liner in. So that's basically it. You know, we styrene walls, get the light ready. Uh, the returns are good to go when you, when you put them in, but then uh, the gaskets, clean, clean, clean. And uh, you know, if you have a set of thermoplastic stairs, you have to put a cap on those. And then uh, sit tight and you can watch us put the liner in. So dropping a liner is one of the most fun, rewarding things you can do because it takes it from looking like a janky hole in the ground to looking like an awesome pool in just minutes. Um, it's a, so it's, it's not overly difficult. The liner does get a little hot, <laughs> but um, it is, uh, it's a lot of fun. And like I said, it just changes so much so fast. Um, what you see my guys doing there with the salt bags is a little trick of the trade that I do. I'll explain more in a minute. Not necessary on this pool, but when you have stairs under the liner or a sun ledge or something, it's a nice little trick of the trade to kind of hold the liner into the shallow end. And, uh, and keep it in place. Now we've got the liner dropped. It's, uh, we got a vacuum running. I apologize if the audio is terrible, but we have to keep that on. And what, basically that kind of holds the liner in. We still got a little work to do in the corners down here. But something I like to do on these saltwater pools, we got all this salt. And what always happens is the water starts filling up the deep end and starts trying to pull the liner downhill. So we make a little dam, doesn't really have to be watertight, but it'll hold a little bit of water, inch or two, maybe three if we're lucky, in the shallow end before it flows downhill, creating a lot of weight that's just gonna make it a lot harder for that 
and just make the liner stretch in better. So we're getting ready to turn the water on in the shallow end, and as the deep end gets done, I'll show you how we tap the main drains, and then that's kind of it for the day. We'll let it fill up another couple feet before we do anything else. So uh, we're almost done. Okay, guys, um, I've got it. I've got it screwed down onto the gasket now. You have a nice sharp knife. Also, you want one that folds up. You don't want one that you're laying around in this thing. You want to make sure this is everything. I use a hand screwdriver when I'm down here. Not on the stairs and stuff where there's a ton of screws, but just you want a lot of control. You slip off of it with an impact. You poke a hole in the liner. You're patching a brand new liner. But it's all I'm going to do is work my way around this real quick. I'm just going to cut this liner away on the inside. Got a little air in the line still from when we cleaned it out a little bit ago. All right, you want to hold on to that. That's a good patch for later on. Now it comes with two screws that don't match the uh, the rest of them. They're machine thread with a pan head instead of a tapered head with kind of aggressive. They're all stainless screws, but obviously for saltwater pool, you just put them on, and you are good to go. And then we just rinse and repeat on the other drain over there. And we, uh, we go to the house for a couple hours. It'll be a while before it fills up enough to do any more work. So stay tuned. So we weren't close enough to any fire hydrants to fill it up quickly. So it was just sitting back for a couple days and waiting for the hose to catch up. I just kicked on the, uh, the pump, got everything running. Um, salt generators, uh, our salt's a little high, but we've got so much rain coming in, I didn't Think that was going to end up being a big deal because it's going to dilute a little bit and should be right on the money. Um, Pintera variable speed, three quarter to one and a half horsepower pump. Uh, right now I'm running it at like half power. You can't even hear it from here to there. It's so quiet, burns no electricity. Uh, we just have a an Easy Touch Eight right here. Right now we just have um, just the light running and the uh, the salt chlorine generator in the pump. So not a lot of uh, stuff, but it's all automated. Uh, I will put a link in the description to all of our uh, all of our parts. This is a really nice, you know, moderate equipment pad here. Everything's really high quality, but not terribly expensive. So if you're building your own pool or getting somebody to build, this is like a, really a premium uh, pool kit for a, a beginner or a starter pool. Um, this is all you really need to run a pool really nice. Got the uh, IC60 right here, making chlorine. Uh, TR60 sand filter and then get the pump and the easy touch and you're in business I'll take you over here and show you the pool and we'll get out of here. Hey guys finally got this one wrapped up uh, just got the pumps kicked on a few minutes ago the uh, chlorinator is uh, making chlorine so we are we're in business it's about to rain all week so that'll kind of mess up the pH but we got it going ICF vinyl liner um, like I said these are DIYable and uh, so just wanted to kind of show you finished product. I'll try to come back over here this evening, show you kind of with the light on at night. Beautiful pool. Um, going to be a lot of fun this summer. So glad I could finally get you the finished product. And uh, stay tuned. We got some fancy pools and uh, projects ICF related coming up uh, in, the, in the coming weeks. So uh, we will see you soon.